That was me a few weeks ago when I made a video about how I'd gone from last April never having sat on a road bike and looking like this to just 500 days later. <sighs> looking like that having just crushed a functional threshold power fitness test and to quote one comment from that video, awesome. You now look like a beast of a cyclist and I expect you'd kill it if you entered an actual outdoor bike race. Bike, bicep, four thumbs up, hashtag gun show. But not everyone was as positive. Some people said, you can't call yourself an above average rider. You never go outside. You just sit on an exercise bike and call it cycling. You may as well be in a spin class. So I did what it's pretty obvious had to be done. One, a few days ago, I went and raced outside. And two, I told my mum, you don't need to use emojis and hashtags every time you comment. So here's the background if you're too lazy to go and watch that last video. In 500 days, I went from having no idea about cycling at all to having an FTP result over 300, getting bumped up to category B when I race online on Zwift and being able to ride with a dog on my back. But to be fair to the people with the negative comments, all those things were achieved indoors, in here on my Wahoo kicker bike. I do have a real bike with wheels and everything, but because the race I got it for was cancelled, I never rode it six or seven times in 2020 until last week when I hooked it up to that Wahoo kicker, I hadn't sat on it all this year. So the question remained, can someone who's only slightly above average ability is to sit in their garage and pedal, take that into the real world and do okay? So I entered a race the Dorney Lake Duathlon, run at the 2012 Olympic rowing site near Windsor, a 10k run into a 38k ride into a 5k run. Now before people start saying that a duathlon is not a good way to demonstrate cycling ability, they'll say that you can't get a good idea of how anyone rides after they've just run, and they'll say the ride itself is not a proper cycle race because there's no drafting, there's no tactics, you just head down on a tri-bike, you might as well be in a spin class outdoors, I know, but it's almost winter in the UK, so there aren't many options. I only own a triathlon bike, and I like running, and it was 20 minutes down the road, so suck it up. Okay, so first of all, this video is going to be short and sweet, because the question, does all this help out there in the real world, is a pretty simple one to answer, and also, my youngest kid shot the footage, and much of it was useless. If you're thinking, can't you fix that? No, not really. He's 15. You can't kick him out until they're 18. The laws in this country are a joke. So going into this, let me explain what my best and worst case expectations were. Best case. I can run okay, in the sense I know what I'm doing with that at least, so half the race I'm going to be in my comfort zone, mentally, if not physically. The course is dead flat, so the one thing I do struggle with, hills, because I'm heavy, they're not going to be an issue. My bike is a good one. I don't know what percentage difference that will make, but I won't be held back by poor kit. And the pre-race info said the simple course around the lake means it's great for beginners. And lastly, surely being able to pedal in here must translate a bit to riding outside. Worst case, the weekend was literally my last couple of days in a period of lighter training because I was about to start what I'm now into, which is my six week run up to my 50 kilometer ultra marathon. So training had been less intense, but I'd still been racing at stuff like Spartan, so I was beaten up toenails still falling off all over the place. Next, the whole transition onto the bike off the run thing was terrifying. Now I did a duathlon on the bike last year, it was about the second time I'd ever ridden it, and it was done under COVID restrictions, lockdown rules, which basically meant they stopped the clock after the run, so they could have everyone start the bike distanced and separated. Now that meant you basically had as long as you wanted in transition. Doing it properly on the clock would be a new thing to me. And the biggest worry was simply having to ride the bike. I've been on it twice this year, both times there on the kicker trainer in the last couple of weeks. And each time it gave me a bad back and a stiff neck. And as well as dealing with holding that position, I have to steer and brake and look where I'm going. If you're a regular outdoor cyclist, these things may seem second nature. Not to me they aren't. So I get there. And first of all, if you are remotely close to Dorney Lake and do anything from 5Ks to triathlons, go do an event there. It is brilliant. Everything is spot on. Parking, spectating, facilities, the course. I love it. I did a 10K there beginning of last year. Still my fastest road 10K ever. Anyway, I unload the bike. I start to wheel it over the registration. Now at this point, I was starting to think I should have ridden somewhere outside in the last week or so. The last time I sat on this thing for any length of time was at a bike fit last December, and then a couple of rides on Zwift last week. And then I did 30 seconds up and down the road the night before to make sure that nothing squeaked or rattled. And talking of the night before, I was also regretting the tub of Ben and & Jerry's and the whole pack of chocolate fingers. 
But all that was neither here nor there when I hear the announcer explain that when we line up at the start, he says if you're planning on running your 10k in the low 30 minutes, make sure you're near the front. What's near the front? Surely you should be at the front, literally the first person to go, because unless some Olympic champion happens to rock up, no one's going to be overtaking you. Now, in theory, if there are crazy fast people at the front, it shouldn't really matter to me in a race, but my plan here was, because I wasn't overly prepared for any of it, to take the run quite easy. A fast 10 for me is a low 40 minute race. A nice slow recovery run is 60 minutes. So I figured I'd run about a 50 minute 10K, thus allowing me to jump on the bike and actually be in reasonable shape to see what I could do. It was the bike section I was most interested in getting some useful results from. But now I know that there are presumably plenty of quick people here, I'm worried that if I'm plodding around in 50 minutes, I'm gonna arrive at the bike transition close to last. And again, my position shouldn't really matter in these things, but I'm wheeling along my carbon fiber spaceship bike at six foot six and an orange onesie. I feel like if I saw me, I'd be thinking, I'll keep an eye on that guy and see how he does. That bike, that onesie, he must be good. So let's cut to the race. Everyone lined up, mass start, off we go for the run. I started around the middle of the pack, it's chip timed anyway, so no need for me to be first across the actual start line. And the pace is quite quick, but it's also complicated by the fact that some of us are doing standard duathlon, 10k run, 38k bike, 5k run, and then some people are doing a sprint version, 5, 19 and 2.5k. And then some people are just doing a 5k, 10k or half marathon run. So I try and ignore what's going on around me because the 5K runners and sprint duathlon guys are flying off. They're doing 17, 18 minute 5Ks. So the route is super simple. It's basically a five kilometer lap to go to the end of the lake and back. So I'm gonna be doing two laps for 10K. And approaching two kilometers in, I'm going too quick. Overly fixated on the people that I can see up in the distance disappearing off ahead. In fact, because of the looping nature of the course, as I'm about three quarters of the way down the lake, I can see people that are already on their way back. However, that works then in my favor because when I'm into that position, I can see loads of people still running up to the first loop. So I know I can come right down on my pace and still not be last. And lots of those people are wearing triathlon suits, so I know that they aren't people just doing the jog, they are actually competing against me in the duathlon, or they're really overdressed. So I really focus on making sure that I finish the run with enough in my legs to give it a good go on the bike. As such, I end up completing the 10K in just under 48 minutes. So that's about a 4.45 pace. A bit quicker than I planned, but equally not a really fast run for me by any stretch. And then I transition to the bike. A timed transition is not something I have ever done before. I did do a couple of off-road duathlons last year on my mountain bike, but that all felt a bit more relaxed and fun. This felt a lot more serious and something that I really, really need to practice. I took just under two minutes to transition. The guy that won the whole thing transitioned in 26 seconds. I'm not sure I could run in and out of the transition area in 26 seconds, let alone change kit and get on my bike. Clearly something to work on. And this is not something you wanna see in transition most of the other bikes already gone out on the course. Now, half of them were doing the sprint version, so they are supposed to have already gone, but even so, it felt like going to the bike sheds after school when you've been held back in detention and your bike is the only one there. So anyway, I hobble on my shoes to the mount line, making a mental note to get some Velcro triathlon shoes that I can leave clipped onto the bike, which is what all the fast guys seem to be doing, and then run barefoot to this stage and just jump on. I then spent the first 20 seconds or so on the approach to the bridge, just thinking, please don't let a wheel fall off or something, and nothing does, because it turns out that actually, when you only ride your bike six or seven times a year, you don't actually need to do much preparation for it anyway. And then the cool bit, as I get across the bridge, I get onto the aero bars, and after my first thought, which was don't fall off, my second thought was, oh, this, this feels really cool, it's just like Zwift. And I'm serious, there is a road up in front of me, there are other riders to get past, the faster I pedal, the faster I go, it all had a very familiar feel. I instantly felt pretty comfortable. I'd imagine most people go from outdoor riding to riding on Zwift, and I assume I left thinking, oh, this is quite a realistic feel. I was like that the other way around. I was thinking, wow, real life has done a pretty good job of ripping off Zwift. That first two kilometer stretch down alongside the lake, I'm going over 40 kilometers per hour, I'm doing 300 watts, I'm going past slower riders, the sun was out, the wind was low, I was literally riding along thinking, I've just found my new hobby, riding a real bike in a race. And suddenly I had a boost of confidence. I did the maths in my head, fast bike plus powerful legs equals, it seems, an okay cyclist. Something I've been told all year is that Zwift 
over penalizes people for their weight. On climbs, being heavy might well make a significant difference, but on the flat, once you're up to speed on an aerodynamic bike, power is power to an extent. Now this was an eight lap ride, and I was half a lap in, so it might have been a little bit early to get too excited, and as I got to the end of the straight, there was then a tight turn to loop back on yourself, which meant coming off of the aero bars, because I can't go around corners on the aero bars, and then onto the brakes, because I can't go around corners too fast either. And then I realized that there was a really nasty crosswind for the first few hundred meters on the way back, and that made my front wheel wobble about. I'm sure an experienced rider would say it was not wobbling at all, but I'm used to having no front wheel. In fact, I don't even steer normally, so any degree of wobble was wobbly. The rest of the ride back down was on a slightly worse quality road, and the sun was in my eyes, and the wind was still a nuisance all the way, but I was looking forward to getting around onto that first straight again. I was enjoying myself. And then, minor disaster, I was so excited at how the first lap had gone that I followed the two riders in front of me straight past the loop around for lap two. They were sprint distance riders who had finished their laps and were therefore heading back to transition. Now, I was not the only person to do that on the day, and arguably the marshalling at that point could have been a tiny bit better, but bottom line, it was a newbie mistake on my part. So I ride towards transition, the marshals are assuming that I'm finishing my sprint, and so they're directing me into the transition area. I take a hard left at the last second, I ignore them yelling at me, hop over a few cones, and fly off doing my best, we're going after Cougar impression. God damn it! and I head back out to start lap two. And lap two is more the same. Again, that straight down the lake is nice and fast. The turn at the far end is still tricky. The ride back is not as nice, but at least this time I make the turn and on I go. Really, really enjoying it. The things that weren't great, but it's just a case of getting more practice, were holding that aero position, particularly in my neck, looking up where I was going, but still trying to stay low at the same time. Although maybe on a slightly more open course, I wouldn't need to spend so much time seeing who was in the way. And my legs did not feel 100%, and obviously you wouldn't expect them to, having just run for almost an hour. But I'm pretty sure that more practice jumping between running and biking and vice versa would only improve that. I actually did a bit of that last year in here and I thought my Ironman was gonna happen, never did because of COVID, and it's just a case of getting the body used to running on or cycling on tired legs. So the stats for the ride, 38 kilometers an hour and five minutes, average speed a fraction over 35 kilometers per hour, maximum speed 45, maximum average power for 20 minutes, 246 watts, average power overall, 237, maximum power recorded, just over 1200. That was the bit when I was coming quickly back into the race after my detour through transition on lap one. And all that feels fairly consistent with the bike in here. Those power numbers are what I'd pretty much expect on an hour long Zwift ride if I just run 10K. With hindsight, I could probably have pushed a bit harder on the bike. I was worried about riding hard outside for a solid hour, but actually it went by real quick. If I was doing it again, I'd wanna get that average power number up a bit. My FTP is around 320 watts, so I feel there's a little bit more to give there, even allowing for the running. And talking of running after the bike ride, I still had a 5K to do. And as I pulled into transition, I was actually feeling pretty good about that. All the people I'd overtaken on the last couple of laps on the bike, who looked like they knew what they were doing, and I was judging that based on how fancy their kit and bike was, which bearing in mind mine was both pretty fancy is clearly no indication of anything really, Anyway, I was thinking, no matter how good they are at running, they just aren't gonna catch me because of this huge lead I'm now gonna go into the run with. And I started running and I thought, oh, they are gonna catch me because my legs don't work. That first kilometer was insane. Looking back at the times, it doesn't seem that bad. My plan was to get sub 25 minutes, so a five minute per kilometer pace. I was only slightly off. But to anybody watching, I must have looked like I'd just come off a two hour heavy squat session. My legs were numb, stumbling along. But again, that is just something that will hopefully improve with practice. Anyway, legs loosened up around the one and a half K mark, and I felt pretty good enough to run the last minute or so under four minute kilometer pace. So 24 minutes overall. And now the only bit that really matters, was I above average? First of all, let me be clear. I realized that while some of the people here were exceptional athletes, it was not a race made up entirely of people like that. There were some people clearly very new to the sport and riding the sort of bike that would be typical of somebody very new to the sport. I also appreciate that a course that goes straight line, corner, straight line, corner, and has no drafting is not the most complex of bike races. But that said, 83 competitors in the standard distance to Athlon, and to give some sort of context to the ability of those 83, all but four ran the first 10 in under an hour, the vast majority were sub 50 minutes, and almost half were around 45 minutes or quicker. The winner went sub 35. So for the entire event, two hours 20, I was 30th, top half and very happy with that. Interestingly, had I knocked just five minutes off, I'm close to top 15, so no complaints at all. But what is interesting is the breakdown. In the first 10 kilometer run, 51st, 
below average by some way. Transition 1, 64th. We'll come back to the bike. Transition 2, 55th. I was obviously getting the hang of it by this point. And then the final run, 41st. I can't remember the last race of any sort I did where I wasn't in the top half. These positions were a bit grim, but the bike ride saved me. Me, an indoor rider that is basically nothing more than 10 friends short of a spin class. My ride was 17th fastest. The lesson from all of this, don't give your £3,000 camera to your child, get them to film you on their iPhone and the image quality will be a million times better and require an awful lot less editing in post. What else? Nothing much. I am happy with that. Had my run training been tailored to peak at the race, had I skipped the ice cream the day before, done some practice of transitions and not got lost on that first lap, I'd have been really, really happy. As someone who has ridden a road bike outside a handful of times in their life, and not at all this year, that was an okay performance. And clearly, at least, it shows that for that type of race, there's a huge crossover between indoor pedaling and outdoor pedaling. As I said before, it really did feel like I was Zwifting, if Zwift had wind and corners. Most important, I really enjoyed it. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that I am going back and doing another. 13th of November, back at Dorney Lake, but this time, the Super Sprint, which I picked because I told Jenna it was called the Super Sprint. And she said, ooh, Super Sprint. That sounds exciting, and I could not disagree. 2.5K run, 10K bike, 2.5K run. Beast mode the whole way. So I need to sort out my transitions, because if I take two minutes to get my shoes on, that will not work well in a race that is over and done in half an hour. And lastly, if you ever see me at one of these events, do what Rob did. Check out his Instagram and say, hi, you're Mark Lewis of YouTube. It makes me feel famous. Don't do what Rob did though, and beat me by a few seconds. That is very rude. Right, I hope that was entertaining and informative. If you liked it, drop me a like and subscribe so you can see notifications for the cool stuff coming soon. If you've got any feedback, as always, stick it in the comments down below. I am out of here. Gotta go talk to my mum and explain that the Rob thing being rude is a joke or she will flood his Instagram with abuse and way too many emojis. <laughs>